Hello and welcome to the first AFCB TV preview show. Every week we'll be joined by matchday commentator Chris Temple, who'll give his preview on the weekend's game. First things first, good morning Chris. Good morning Zoe. Three new signings for the Cherries this summer, what have you made of them so far? Uh, it's, the interesting thing for me is that Eddie Howe's gone foreign this year because he's obviously, as we know from the makeup of the squad, he likes to have British players experienced in the Premier League. Yeah, well, of course, one or two overseas signings. But to have Diego Rico and Jefferson Lerma, neither of whom speak English at the moment, um, so it's going to take a little bit of time for them to gel into the squad and to, uh, you know, to, to find their way, I guess, in the English game. So that's the first thing I would say. Is it's quite interesting that Eddie Howe has gone that way. £25 million, pounds, of course, he spent 20 on Nathan Ake, so those sort of numbers are just associated with the Premier League these days. But a lot of people won't be too aware of Jefferson Lerma. A few snippets of him at the World Cup. Um, interesting to hear Eddie Howe say at his press conference today that he was hoping he didn't do too well at the World Cup so that everybody else uh, didn't suddenly get alerted to him. So uh, I had actually saw a little bit of him at the World Cup. I was at one of Colombia's games. He only came on for 20 minutes at the end, but he made a couple of crunching tackles in that time. Um, I think there's a, a view that he's a bit of an enforcer, but I think he's going to be a bit more energetic than that. I think he's going to be a bit more of a box-to-box -box midfielder. So really interesting to see how he goes. He's not going to be ready yet for maybe a couple of weeks. He hasn't really trained. As for Diego Rico, of course, also not available for the first three games. He's someone who's a bit more unknown. I don't know too much about him, I have to say. Um, but uh, by all accounts, a very good attacking left-sided player. So some competition for Charlie Daniels uh, down that left-hand side. And obviously options in terms of formation switches as well. Uh, we saw them quite often go to 3-4-3 last season. So he'll be uh, an interesting one to see down the left-hand side when he gets going. And obviously David Brooks as well, who is, I guess, in the same sort of category as Lewis Cook. And he's come from the championship. Similar sort of fee, highly rated young player. Is he ready to go straight in? Because Lewis Cook wasn't, and obviously everyone was clamouring for Lewis Cook um, to play. And when he did play, boy, boy did he do well. So uh, at the minute, Eddie Howe's only got 20 fit players, fit and available players. So he says everyone in his squad is available and, and, and ready for the Premier League. So hopefully we'll see David Brooks uh, in the league sooner rather than later. And we saw a club record fee for Jefferson Lerma. That sends out quite a statement of intent, doesn't it? It certainly does. £25 million. Pounds. I mean, I'm sure the uh, the money men behind the scenes were shuddering with those sort of fees. And again, just having a quick chat with Jeff Moster this morning, I think it was quite a stressful window, the last, uh, particularly the last couple of weeks, trying to get that deal over the line. They're probably quite relieved. Obviously, a month less transfer chaos with the, the window having been brought forward to the start of the season. But yeah, that, that deal, by all accounts, wasn't easy. Um, I think being a Premier League club, foreign clubs see that and the price maybe goes up a little bit. So maybe they might have paid a little bit more than they wanted to initially. But I think these days to get players of, of World Cup quality, they are unfortunately the sort of numbers that you're going to be talking about. Well, earlier this week, we caught up with our new record signing, Jefferson Lerma. And you can have a look at what he's got to say. So it's been a long transfer and we feel like we've waited a long time. There's been a lot of rumours. How are you feeling now you're finally here at Aves? Bueno, eh, ha sido un poco larga, pero... En este caso era por cosas de, de ambos clubes que no se colocan de acuerdo, pero lo más importante es que estoy aquí y, y, y todos hemos salido beneficios. And of course, we knew about the rumors and we watched the World Cup, we've watched YouTube, we tried to find out a little bit about you. Tell us a little bit about what kind of player you are. Bueno, eh, soy un jugador potente, eh, con buen pase de balón er buen recuperador y, y, y vengo con muchas ganas de triunfar, o sea que soy muy contento por haber dado este paso. And of course we've had a long time to think about you and I'm sure you've had a long time to think about us, so what do you know about AFC Bournemouth and, and ourselves in the Premier League? Que, bueno, eh, he leído un poco la historia sobre este club y creo que es un club que, que ha venido en crecimiento, dando pasos muy, muy importantes, eh, por eso he decidido venir y es una liga que, que me encanta, que me, siempre me ha apasionado por, por el estilo de juego. And we watched the World Cup in Colombia, I'm sure, excited everybody when we watched the World Cup. And of course the journey ended against England. What was your World Cup journey like? Bueno, eh, el viaje a la Copa del Mundo fue algo muy bonito. Creo que era fruto de, del trabajo que había, que había venido haciendo durante mucho tiempo y esa fue la recompensa. Eh, disfruté al máximo eh, esa oportunidad, eh, siempre quise dar el máximo, lastimosamente eh, no fue la Copa del Mundo esa para, para todos, 
lo que, lo que esperábamos, llegar mucho más lejos, pero bueno, son las cosas que, era, que, que habían para nosotros en ese momento y pues agradecido con Dios. And of course, last season was a long season for you with um, Levante, and then a longer summer with Colombia and Russia playing in the World Cup. How fit are you now? Have you had a break? And when will you be ready to play for FC Bournemouth? Bueno, eh, soy muy bien, gracias a Dios. Que he venido preparándome durante parte de mis vacaciones y se trabajos específicos. Ahora que llegué a Holanda con el Levante también. Me estoy preparando, o sea que me encuentro muy bien. And how do you feel about your first chance to play in the Premier League? Of course, La Liga is one of the best leagues in the world. The Premier League as well. You must be excited to play the big teams here. Bueno, eh, contento por, por esa oportunidad que me da Dios y la vida. Entonces, como te dije antes, vengo con muchas ganas de de triunfar y y hacer cosas importantes en eso. And just funny then, you made a big move from Colombia all the way to Europe, and now you make the big move from, from Spain all the way to England. How ready are you for the challenge? No, I'm very prepared. I think that in my football career, I've been giving two passes important and I've acquired a maturity that has helped me to facilitate much more things. Welcome to FC Bournemouth. Thank you. Well, that was Jefferson Lerma, his first interview as a Cherries player. You can also catch up with Diego Rico and David Brooks for free on AFCB TV. Now, looking ahead to this weekend, Chris, Cardiff, they're going to be quite a formidable opposition. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Bournemouth know too well, uh, of course, three years ago, or well, four years ago now, of being a, a newly promoted team and what that does to you on the uh, the first day of the season. I remember the, the buzz here uh, on that day. Um, but in terms of Cardiff, they are probably quite unique. They're pretty direct. I heard a stat yesterday that was uh, if completed passes was what the league was judged on, Cardiff would have been relegated from the championship last season. So from that tells you they're pretty direct. Set pieces, I think they scored the most set pieces uh, in the championship last season as well. We all know what Neil Warnock brings. Um, Harry Arter, of course, has gone to Cardiff and he's, I think he'll be a great player for Neil Warnock, exactly what he's looking for. Not available, of course, to, to turn up here, certainly on the pitch tomorrow. It'd be weird to see him turning up in a blue track suit rather than a red one. Um, but yeah, Cardiff, I think... I think they're going to struggle, to be honest with you. I mean, you look at Wolves, everyone's hyping them up as probably even finishing in the top half. Um, Fulham have obviously had a great uh, a great window in terms of strengthening, but Cardiff, they've mainly gone with championship players. They've signed Smithies, the goalkeeper from QPR, Greg Cunningham, obviously, from Preston as well, amongst others. They did bring in an overseas signing from Spain yesterday as well. So uh, I think it's going to be a tough season for them, but the, the new Premier League first day factor will obviously add a little bit extra edge to their performance. For Bournemouth, I think, I mean, the start of last season wasn't very good. So from that point of view, again, talking to the players, there's a real focus on last season was a, you know, has got to be put to bed in terms of we have to start a lot better than that. So tough opening day, but not as tough as it could have been. I don't think you necessarily want to fly straight in against one of the big guns on the opening day of the season. Uh, so a winnable game, um, but I think there'll be a certain element of the, uh, the carnival factor for Cardiff as well. And Eddie Howe said in his pre-match press conference this morning how crucial it is to get off to, to a good start. They know too well that what, uh, a poor start can do as they had last year mm. so all the players will be really focused well that's the, the thing about the bottom half now isn't it? it's just so competitive you know you, you all the finishing 12th last season and in the end it was you know for a few weeks it was a bit hairy uh, they couldn't quite clamber away from the lower reaches until you know a bit later on in the season so so many teams are much of a muchness outside the top six really so if you find yourself suddenly 10 points behind some of the teams that you're uh, you're trying to compete with then you give yourself a, a little bit too much work to do and obviously just you want to get off the season off to a, a good start with, with everybody feeling positive it's been a good pre-season some, some great performances in pre-season lots of goals here so let's hope that translates actually onto the pitch in the Premier League and there's obviously 38 games ahead of us how do you see it panning out for the Cherries? People are sort of saying now that three seasons in the Premier League Bournemouth are now an established Premier League club. I know Eddie Howe doesn't quite see it like that because he, you almost feel like you're never established because that league is so competitive. Um, but a fourth season, I think people are thinking, now's the time just to, to kick on a little bit. The Burnley comparisons will be drawn, of course, because they went and got in Europe last year. So the ambitious fans are thinking, why can't Bournemouth? If Burnley can do it, why can't Bournemouth go and get into Europe? I think that's a bit lofty myself. Um, Eddie Howe says to us in the press conference, of course, the first priority is to stay in the league which it will be for everybody outside the top six really but I do think I do think something extra would needs to happen this year just to to keep the, the club rolling forward there was a bit of criticism last year in terms of you know I guess from outside maybe that Bournemouth slipped in terms of position 
which people read a lot into, but in terms of points, you know, it's, it's much of a muchness, a few points either way. Um, I'd like to see the cup competitions um, be a, bring a bit more success this year. The, the attitude towards cup competitions has obviously been to give players match time, but I see the cup competitions, and I know fans do, they always tweet into us saying, cup competitions, it's a great opportunity for a team like Bournemouth to, to go to Wembley, to sneak into Europe, possibly through the back door as well. So if there's one thing that I'd like to see happen this year, as well as Bournemouth stay in the league, first and foremost, it is to have a cup run, a decent cup run in one of those competitions. And, and maybe that would be a, a nice way to bring this, a bit of a lift to the season. Well, there's obviously plenty to look forward to over the ni next nine months here at Vitality Stadium. It all starts tomorrow against Cardiff City and we look forward to seeing you then.